Well, Sorg, uh, I've been uh, I've been thinking about because we got Joe Dombrowski here, and we're talking a lot about uh, uh, indie wrestling and everything like that. And uh, as uh, I believe it was Eamon mentioned earlier, the a, a few of the divas got in a fight over uh, over Twitter, and it still remains to be seen whether that's uh, legitimate or not. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, it, it got me thinking about how the world is a vastly different place than it was uh, five, even ten years ago. Um, you've got social media, you've got live streaming events, uh, and, and you've got NXT. And um, so my question to the, uh, the assembled panel and anybody out there listening is, um, in this brave new world, what is the best way that an indie wrestler can get ahead? Hmm. Uh, is it just the same way it ever was? Put on good matches and let word of mouth take off or, uh, or, since there's the opportunity to be more proactive, is that a must nowadays? Uh, I, I think there's a few different components to it. Um, I mean, match quality helps, obviously, but you need the right platform to bounce off of. Obviously, if you're at a PWG or at an Evolve or Ring of Honor or whatever the case may be, there is going to be a lot more sets of eyes on you. Um, you can have the best match in the world, but if nobody knows it or nobody's there to see it, then it really doesn't matter. Uh, social media is huge, and I could do three hours right now on what's wrong with wrestlers on social media. Um, we'll have to do a special to, edition. To really try to streamline it, you have wrestlers out there that spend thousands of dollars to build an image with their bodies in the gym and their gear and tanning and doing their hair and, and all across the board. Um, including and up to uh, their matches, their promos, how they present themselves, how they present their character. And then they'll go online and they will post a photo smiling, shaking hands and hugging with the guy that he just tried to murder in the ring last night. Or he will post a, a uh, message complaining about his day job. Or he will post a whiny uh, message about um, how little friends he has, or he's got a relationship problem, or anything that would make a fan go, well, why am I paying to see this guy? Um, the Young Bucks are the smartest guys in independent wrestling right now. And I don't just say that because Matt Jackson owns a copy of The Legend of Virgil, although it doesn't hurt. <laughs> um, I, I say that because... Half the people look at the Bucks on Twitter and thinks it's hilarious and and is quote unquote getting the joke. And the other half think they're the most cocky, overwhelming, overbearing a-holes that have no respect for anybody. And I don't agree with everything the Bucks do, um, but I side with them a heck of a lot more than I side with their critics. They know how to create a groundswell of buzz and discussion uh, and believability through social media, where it's not a character. It's Matt and Nick Jackson, uh, uh, the person and the characters, fused together. Uh, uh, you need to know how to get yourself over out of the ring as well, because it's not just seeing you once a month anymore. You need to be able to go online and convince people why they need to take money out of their wallet and pay to see you. Just like back in the day when you'd stand in front of Gene Oakland and cut a 90-second promo in the market specifics. This Saturday in Pittsburgh, I'm coming to the arena. That's been replaced by Twitter. Um, and then when they get there, you have to deliver. And there, ha there can't be a disconnect between the person they see in the ring and the person that they're reading the post from on Twitter. Um, to me, that's, that's cognitive dissonance. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Um, I want characters I can believe in. Uh, uh, and I always use this example. Anybody that thinks kayfabe is dead, do a poll of how many people thought punk sitting on the, the uh, 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 entryway in Las Vegas was a shoot. Everybody bought it because everybody wanted to believe it. And punk became the biggest thing in wrestling. Daniel Bryan was the next biggest thing in wrestling because everybody believed that the company was legitimately holding him down and he was legitimately the hardest worker and he legitimately would never get the world title. And that was probably true at one point, 
but the people got behind him and it made his career. People buy into the Bucks now. People buy into Dolph, Cesaro, Ziggler. Uh, well, I just said that. Uh, whoever. Um, you know, people aren't buying into what they see as manufactured. Um, so I've gone on for entirely too long. But in short, create a brand and market it and realize that just because you leave the ring, um, you're not done working and you're not done selling yourself. You are never done selling yourself. I I uh, really agree completely with Joe, and I do think that aspect of marketing I think is the big deal. Um, there have been obviously a lot of talented independent wrestlers that have got signed recently, but I feel like the ones that have been skyrocketed or, or really put the focus on I think right now in WWE is you know your Kevin Owens, your Finn Balor's, uh, even though it was a while back, your Sami Zayn's. Uh, and all of those people had something about themselves that they marketed in some way or another. Obviously, Sami Zayn had El Generico and, and became sort of an indie like cult hero in a sense. Same with uh, Kevin Owens, who was very much synonymous with indie wrestling. Uh, Finn Balor had been, you know, wrestling as Prince Devon and having amazing matches, um, you know, killing it for years, but. Uh, and I'm not saying he got signed because of this, but like the whole body paint stuff, like got, opened him to a wider audience of people. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen like when he was still on the independence, people sharing videos of, oh, what did uh, Prince Devitt wear next? You know, look at look at him as the Joker. Look at him as as this comic book character. Um, there is a level of marketability that goes beyond just having phenomenal matches because there's talents right now that have been recently signed that are, are phenomenal wrestlers and, and uh, put on phenomenal matches that are still getting the same sort of um, uh, level of, not, not to the level of like a Kevin Owens where his first match in on NXT was on a takeover and he immediately skyrocketed to becoming a big deal. There's talented people in that in developmental right now that they're still taking time on and they're still um, uh, working on. And I think the difference I could just tell between those two, you know, sections is just that level of market. Um, completely agree with Joe about social media. That's a huge aspect of it. Um, and yeah, I, I think I just, just summing up what Joe said, like what you do beyond the ring is as much important as what you do in the ring. Mike. Uh, yeah. Well, I, this goes kind of long, kind of along the same lines as marketing, but I think there also has to be some kind of like, viral component to your character like you need a way to get out there beyond just the world of professional wrestling like i remember a couple years ago um a clip of cesaro or back then claudio castagnoli in, in chikara doing the giant spin where he went like 100 revolutions around blew up on the internet like between and you know now he is where he is today i'm not saying that's entirely that reason but it got him a lot of notice and a lot of notoriety and like just a couple weeks like a month or so ago the young bucks were at, at midnight because they super kicked the child in the face for for his birthday party <laughs> and like you have you have stuff like the punk promo where he'll throw out like the ring of honor reference and all that stuff and you have daniel bryan's yes chant going viral in college football stadiums you need something like that's why the Attitude Era worked so well, because you had your Rocks, you had your Austin 316, you had the NWO, you had DX. You had stuff that was easily imitatable or easily digested for people who aren't fans of professional wrestling, and they can say, oh, wow, that is really cool, or that's different, maybe I should check that out. And I think that, I mean, I'm not saying people should go, try and make a viral video or or a viral chant or something because you can't do it but you have to kind of hope that something you're doing when you're building your brand sticks like you have to try and be as different and unique as possible and really really stand out so from the chat or what lb 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 goes last right is that how